Hi, I'm Mike Alpert. I'm the president and CEO of the Claremont Club. The documentary you're about to watch proposes an interesting concept that exercises medicine. I believe it's the most powerful medicine available today. Eleven years ago, we began developing exercise-based programs for people struggling with chronic illnesses and chronic injuries. The profound effect that exercises had on these people and their quality of life and overall health has changed our lives forever. Isn't it time that we take the lead in merging the experts in healthcare with the experts in fitness to begin working together instead of so independently when we know the powerful effect that exercise has on health? I believe we have a societal obligation to improve the health of our communities and I know we have the ability to change and save lives. There's simply nothing better. Years ago, we used to talk that if exercise were a pill, that everyone would take it. Today, we know through research that exercise is good to prevent almost every disease. So exercise truly is medicine. What we have seen is that exercise has a tremendous positive impact on patients. My real passion through my involvement in both family medicine and sports medicine is, is connecting fitness with healthcare. I think we need to merge those two together and so that's what I've really worked to do in my involvement in some national organizations, the American College of Sports Medicine, uh, leading an initiative called Exercise as Medicine which really tries to connect fitness industry with the healthcare industry. When I see a patient as they grow older that is doing all the things that they want to do, almost inevitably the common denominator is exercise. Yes, there's no question that exercise is sort of a, almost an all-purpose cure. It helps us stay at, at our best emotionally. It helps us stay at our best spiritually. It, it's really, uh, uh, and intellectually as well. I mean, exercise is a, in a certain sense, it's an all-purpose wellness remedy. Well, exercise is medicine is, should be the central core of our whole healthcare system. If we can get more people moving, stretching, feeling comfortable doing this, we can get a lot of people off the, all the medications and the drugs, really make a difference in quality of life, longevity of life, and really enjoying what we're here to do. The Claremont Club's work with exercise as medicine is a fabulous example. I think exercise has become medicine to me. I didn't believe it at the beginning. Um, I was definitely skeptical about it. But if anything's living proof, it's me. We, we are transitioning to what we call population health. And that's where the healthcare system truly does come together. For many years, we've believed that, it's, that the term system is a misnomer. But a heavy emphasis on health and wellness, not just healthcare delivery or sickness, but actually treating people, helping people so that they do not deal with these long-term chronic illnesses. You know, exercise as medicine is a great opportunity for both the fitness and the medical industries to get together and really make a difference in the long-term care, the long-term health, wellness, fitness of the entire population. You know, we really exercise now, as medicine now is becoming merging fitness with healthcare. You know, it occurs to me we have got a whole industry that's dedicated to getting and people dedicated to getting and keeping people more active. It's the it's the fitness industry, the health club industry. Why are we? Why is that industry so separate from healthcare? I need to be able to refer my patients, and I think insurance should pay 
for patients going and meeting with a fitness professional to get them more active. And so really that's what we're pushing for with exercise as medicine. But we've learned over the years, we've learned that people that following, if, if they have, for example, an injury and they follow that with proper exercise and recovery, they can prevent those illnesses from progressing. The cost of medicine is tremendous. And every new uh, medication that comes to the market that has beneficial impact will come at a, a very high price tag. Here we have a modality that is equivalent to any medicine that we deliver, which would cost probably a small fraction of what many of these medication cost. And I don't see a reasonable uh, explanation why would that not be considered uh, something that society should support. It will, be, it will come at a much lower price than other medications. I think the challenge of the medical industry and in bringing the medical and the fitness industry together, um, it's, it's, it's an evolution. It's going to take some time. And, uh, but I think if you don't have somebody pushing that envelope, uh, such as Mike and other URSA members and club industry um, leaders, uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, but bringing the two together, I think when you see model programs and you see what's occurring, um, that there, there's not a monetary drain. Um, there's an emotional and mental outcome. And you put all these together, um, it's the right thing to do. I want to get my diabetic patients in a health club. I want to get my heart disease patients in a health club. I want to get my patients with low back pain and fibromyalgia into uh, Pilates and yoga classes. You know, The Claremont Club is showing that they can make a home for these people. They can make them feel comfortable there and confident to go in and exercise. And this needs to be the example. We need to promote this. And I, I love the idea of doing this videotape where we can show others what this has done for patients and we can show other physicians that, hey, refer patients to a club like this. It's going to do more for your patients than most of the medications you could prescribe. The Claremont Club, under uh, Mike Alpert's uh, leadership, has taken a uh, worldwide leadership position in really e emphasizing the medicinal effect of regular exercise. The improvement in people who have chronic illness that I've seen really helped at the Claremont Club is really beyond words. I think Claremont Club has become a leader in developing and delivering programs to many different populations that really need it. And there's no reason why the whole industry shouldn't really just grab hold of it and really make a difference in all their communities. Uh, the Claremont Club has done so much with Project Walk and their cancer programs that everyone else needs to pay attention to it and not just go after the young, already fit population, but realize the entire population can benefit from moving and exercising. You really have to take uh, what the Claremont Club has done as a model when you, when you look, it's a leap of faith uh, that, that Mike Alpert and his team have started that they realize where, where, do, where do people with paralysis, where do people with cancer, where does this continuum of care, where does it exist? Because it really doesn't when you start looking at our nation, there's a huge shortfall there. We were fortunate to, to have Mike as a friend that uh, again guided us through this and said we're going to keep Hal exercising. Keeping HAL exercising has now turned into over 85 clients in a program that are exercising on a weekly basis. I've been employed here in what they call the end zone, which is child care department. So I've got to meet a lot of other people that are here at the Claremont Club besides just the people of Project Walk. Over here, they have a, what they call wellness after cancer. They had a PEDS program, kids with cancer. They're helping all sorts of people here. So my outlook at life, it gets a lot better. I think where we're transitioning, as I, I may have mentioned earlier, I think it's really exciting. I think we are moving in health care, finally from sick care to health care. Uh, from the point of view of population health, we're taking responsibility not for just taking care of people in the hospital, but trying to prevent them from coming to the hospital. And or once they come to the hospital, that they don't return. And so that part of it moves us to work with uh, organizations like the Claremont Club and others out there in the community that are in the fitness and the wellness and exercise and healthy living 
I think we're much more incentivized today and we're working towards that. And I think that's exciting because I think when we look into the future, we will have healthier communities as a result. The Claremont Club created a whole new way of approaching these the problems that human beings face. By the Claremont Club getting outside of the box, they were able to bring a very fresh, new, different viewpoint, which is often the way a problem gets solved, is by getting a new perspective. And that's what they've done. And in a sense, they're probably one of the most entrepreneurial and leading health clubs in the world in terms of developing new ways to use their core technology and competencies to serve human beings. Clubs like the Claremont Club are indispensable for health promotion and, and disease prevention. So I felt very lucky to find Mike Alpert's Claremont Club because they became a model of excellence for the entire health club industry. We noticed tremendous uh, improvement with his uh, muscle retention, his uh, strength coming back, uh, mobility and, and the arm. Uh, his entire right side actually started to improve drastically and we, we noticed that there's no lag like uh, there used to be. There was um, uh, more endurance. The Claremont Club is one of our outstanding members that really bridges the gap between the medical community and the health club community. Every three minutes, a family hears the word, your kid has cancer. I was diagnosed with my original breast cancer about 15 years ago and I was just about 40 years old, just turning 40. It was actually on my birthday that I had the mammogram. And um, it, was, it was difficult, but I got through it, and I took all the treatment that I could have, and it still progressed into metastatic breast cancer. And the, that means that the cancer cells have escaped from the original site and gone throughout my body by the bloodstream. So they are at this point in my entire spine and both hips and in the pleura of both lungs. Zane was diagnosed with uh, stage four neuroblastoma cancer at the age of five and a half, about uh, almost four years ago. Um, they basically gave us uh, a 20 to 25 percent chance of survival at the time of uh, diagnosis. I was not an exercise person. I hated it and I still do not like it. I'm not going to lie and say that I really enjoy um, working out, but I know that it has changed my life. In the last um, 11 years, watching um, the, our participants go through the 12-week program, they start out tired and without balance, without um, range of motion, also with their self-confidence, all that stuff um, is at a very low level. Also being just unsure of what they're able to do. And then watching them step by step start the process of strength training and cardiovascular exercise, taking classes and working on their nutrition. It's almost a night and day difference. Pomona Valley Hospital several years ago with the inspiration from, from Mike Alpert um, inspired us to work together and one of the programs that's been a result of that, we've had many, but is Living Well After Cancer and that's been a tremendous program. Uh, I believe there's been over 790 people that have gone through that program. Um, I have firsthand, my, my wife uh, went through that program, is in that program, I don't want to say went through, she's still in the program, very active member. Um, and it's, it's, it's tremendous. Not only in that it, it helps the person who's had a, a serious illness, a serious disease, cancer, uh, but also dealing with the fitness part of it. I think the wellness part of it that the Claremont Club provides um, is the psychological and the behavioral, and it really gives um, these men and women that have dealt with this serious disease um, hope, and, uh, and they progress. And, it, and I think it's a wonderful program and I think it's great that the hospital, the healthcare side of it can work 
with the fitness and health side of it. I think our opportunities here are, sh should grow immensely as a result of this. This program is not just designed for kids with cancer. Um, it's designed for families who are fighting cancer together. And if there is an advocacy program that actually targets these specific families who are going through these tough times before, during, and after the treatment and, and the battle of, of fighting cancer, this is the way to go. We as a family have always believed that we have to fight together as a family in order to win this battle, but you just cannot do it alone. You need the support. This is God sent, and this is a message to anybody and everybody. Somehow, some way, somewhere, someone is affected by this, whether directly or indirectly. This is a program that needs to go national. This is a program that needs to be supported by the government, by the people, by everybody, because it affects everybody. We've been blessed uh, to be affiliated with the Claremont Club for many years of our life, um, namely me, um, very closely with uh, CEO Mike Alpert over the past 10 years since my accident happened in the summer of 2007. I was in a diving accident uh, six years ago into a pool and I uh, compressed my C4, C5 vertebrae and it left me paralyzed from the chest down. Uh, my injury happened on May 21st, 2011. I live in a two-story house, about 3.30 in the morning, went to walk downstairs, misstepped, uh, laid out, fell down my stairs basically, hit my head one good time, and the result of that being I'm a uh, quadriplegic, which means a C5 injury, hit my spinal cord, and from the neck down at that moment, I was totally paralyzed. I could not move at all, my hands, my feet, nothing from the neck down. Uh, from that moment on, uh, yeah, definitely a lot of change there. You know, you know, one day you're working 40, 50 hours a week and uh, out in the community doing lots of things, and the next day you're laying in a hospital bed not knowing what's going to go on. And they're telling you and your family right there that uh, not only will you ever walk again, you won't ever move again. You won't be able to feed yourself or function again. Uh, the disease I have is called PLS which is in the family of ALS and Lou Gehrig's disease. About four years ago, I was encouraged by my friend, Gary Jones, to try to improve upon what little muscle strength that I had. He, along with various former colleagues from Life Fitness, began to find a few different machines that could be adapted for me to use from my wheelchair. During their due diligence, they came upon Project Walk, and we arranged for my first workout at Project Walk. I have definitely regained strength in many of my muscles. Um, my life has improved tremendously since um, coming to Project Walk. Um, originally when I started uh, six years ago, I couldn't move my right arm and I recently gained function of my right arm, being able to you know, turn it, use it to read on the iPad. The the lifetime medical cost for a spinal cord can reach anywhere from two and a half to three million dollars over their lifetime. And I think uh, what's important to know on that is that most of that is not covered by insurance. The impact of Project Quakari, frankly, was uh, amazing. I was basically told that I would be in a wheelchair and a walker the rest of my life. And after nine months of, of therapy, and which I do six days a week. About a month, month or a half ago, I've started to begin to uh, actually walk on my own, which is counter to what every single... <laughs> okay, I'm okay. Uh, specialist told me so it's a life changer. Exercise is medicine because you know our bodies are meant to move, and when 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 we are in wheelchairs, we know we're not able to initiate movement. So being able to come to a place like this where you're able to get out of your chair, to stand in a standing frame, to uh, get the blood flow 
to do things that you never thought you'd be able to do is huge. Life continues to improve daily uh, through the exercise, but not only the exercise, through the people itself that you work with here. Uh, continuing to not only walk, but to get stronger, to able to even just lift things, simple things that you, you take for, for granted, that we're, we're still re regaining control. So uh, life's definitely improving as you come here. These people want to go. Uh, they want to be there because it's making a difference in their lives. Everybody leaves the hospital thinking that, you know, there's no hope or there's, there's a limit. And Project Walk is a, a place where there is no limit and they, uh, people need to know about it. I don't think a lot of us realize how powerful an effect exercise has on the brain. It's amazing. We have studies now that we've developed these really sophisticated functional MRIs to do brain scans. We are finding that people who do regular exercise, we actually see growth of the brain. We have always thought that you're born with a certain amount of neurons and as you get older you slowly lose these and that's part of the development of cognitive impairment of Alzheimer's disease as you get older. It's because of this loss of neurons. But what we're finding is if we put older patients on an exercise program, their brain actually grows. And, and, and in key areas, the areas that sort of determine whether or not you develop Alzheimer's disease. The Claremont Club has done an amazing job of making a whole range of people feel welcome and comfortable. They've taken patients who have spinal cord injuries, who are paralyzed, and have them going in and working out right next door to able-bodied people. And, and I think it makes everybody feel good when they see this club is very inclusive and we're taking care of people who have these horrible chronic diseases from spinal cord injury to breast cancer to Parkinson's disease. Um, the Claremont Club has figured out a way to, to make them feel welcomed and the business model is working. And so I do think it needs to be the example for all clubs and that we are more about than just helping them get more active. That socialization piece I think is, is really key. I think of it, if this program caught on and became a regular thing for health clubs, I think entire communities would be elevated by it. I think it would do so much for individual populations of cancer patients and diabetes patients and anyone with any kind of medical issues can be helped by a program like this. So I think it really has improved for me almost every aspect of my life and just the fact that I have a life still. I would encourage other club owners out there and corporate club owners or independent club owners um, to to not shy away from this. This is something um, that, that, that does work, and I think we've proven that here in this little town of Claremont uh, on the amount of lives that are being changed. The impact of exercise uh, of uh, our patient at the Claremont Club is tremendous. I'm a huge fan of the Claremont Club. They've taken a leadership position in the entire global fitness and wellness industry and that they're reaching out to everyone in their community, no matter how healthy or how ill, and they have got the fitness professionals at that club that are of the highest caliber, so that they, they are doing a tremendous service, not only to their own community, but to the entire health club industry. Mike Alpert has been a shining example to others in our industry by including programs like Project Walk in his club. As our population ages, so does our health care needs. Why wouldn't all club owners and operators want to include these type of services for their aging members? You know, the Claremont Club is an amazing place. And, and you know, my hat, my hat is off to Mike Alpert. I started talking to, to Mike about this 10, 12 years ago when I started the Exercises Medicine Initiative. I began to ask him, well, why aren't clubs more interested in this? And you know, that's been a passion of Mike's. It was amazing the synergy we had because Mike truly believes that a health club can be that more than just a place to go look good in a bathing suit. That we could uh, really use it. I could refer patients there. 
Uh, people could come there to uh, prevent disease and, and treat disease. I've seen patients have dramatic results there, uh, not only in terms of their disease getting better, but uh, them socializing and feeling better about themselves, improving self-esteem and confidence and uh, you know even getting anxiety and depression better. We know that exercise has a powerful effect on all of those. This is the future of what fitness in the fitness industry is going to be. I, I know that as a, as a father, with a child that has paralysis. This hit me early on in, in Hal's care and finding out why insurance would not cover. And it was a simple code, the UM code, the Universal Medical Code, um, is written in such a fashion that it's so rigid and um, it, it didn't, because certain treatments or certain exercises aren't covered within the Universal Medical Code, they wouldn't cover it. It's just it's sad because the system doesn't care much about what happens after cancer. They're just focused on the tumor itself and let's just get them to a state of remission, not considering what happens during that process. You know, it frustrates me as a family physician that I can refer my obese patient to a bariatric surgeon and we pay to staple their stomach, but I can't send them to a fitness professional. That just doesn't make sense. And beyond that, you know, I wouldn't think of managing a diabetic without having them see a nutritionist. But, you know, we need some changes in legislation in terms of what we reimburse for. We have become so preoccupied with expensive uh, surgical procedures and pharmaceutical procedures, but we would never, we never cover anything like this. I would not be here if it wasn't for the Claremont Club doing their program, offering it to me, continuing to offer it. I don't know, I wouldn't be, I know I would not be exercising. I really strongly suspect I would not be alive. The best thing that we can do for these people who are suffering is keep them in exercise so they're not sitting at home deteriorating. They're not going back to the hospital for bladder infections, for pressure sores, for um, HO, for whatever it may be, these secondary complications that are a side effect from doing nothing. Exercise should be subsidized for these people just as med regular medicine is subsidized. There were some doors that were open because of Mike and the Claremont Club. Um, we went through those doors as a family and a community that surrounded us. And, and then we start thinking about the rest of the country. Not everybody gets that, and why? Why can't the rest of this country get that? And, and so if, if somebody wants to look at results and they see what's going on and they see how the program's grown from one person that said, let's just keep your son working out, you know, and that's grown into many other programs beyond paralysis that are making a difference. And why can't it be in, not, not every just metropolitan, but in every state, in every community? The time is now to fight for legislative reform, for long-term financial aid for these people that struggle with such terrible chronic injuries and chronic illnesses. Here at the Claremont Club, we have truly proven that exercise is medicine. This has been a West Coast Multimedia Production.